Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown, where we remind you weekly, weekly that such is the nature of life, that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. You're that opportunity. So am I, and so it is. We are a center that celebrates life, that celebrates you. We celebrate who you are and the way in which life is moving through you with the joy that it brings, the goodness it brings, and the ways in which spirit moves in you and through you to bring greater gifts to the world. Your gifts, the gifts specifically given and moving through you, those things which you love and adore and are passionate about that you get to participate in in life. We celebrate you, whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever your background, we celebrate you as an individual expression of the divine. Your pronouns, your, your ethnicities, all of those kinds of things that often separate us here at the Center for Spiritual Living Midtown unite us as we recognize and celebrate those differences as being individualized expressions of the divine. Now, that's a whole lot of big words. And, and if you go to our website, you can get a little more understanding of what we're talking about if you're not clear. But know that what matters is we believe in you and we believe in the infinite. So now we're going to hear from um, a little more about who we are by listening to a recording, a video of our Declaration of Principles, first written by Dr. Ernest Holmes. I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life. And the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness. And the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. Well, good morning. It's so great to be with you this morning. And welcome to all who are listening. You know, it has been said that change is the only constant in the universe. So we are always dealing with change. And, you know, sometimes change is a welcome thing and we can navigate our way through it easily. But sometimes we find ourselves in changing situations that are challenging. And how can we deal with the one constant thing in the universe, change with peace and with joy and with love? Well, we're going to hear a lot more about that from our speaker today, Reverend Cynthia Paulson. But I'm going to mention a few things that I think are helpful. One of the ways would be to find joy. To, one of the ways to find joy in a changing situation would be to focus on gratitude. Shift your perspective to focus on the things that you are grateful for. See the good in your life. See the good in the change that is coming. There is always good to see if we just look for it. Another suggestion would be to practice being mindful and being in the present moment. It's so easy to get caught up in what might happen or in doomsday thinking. Instead, again, focus on the good that you see now and be fully present in the moment. You might want to consider some positive self-talk affirmations. These can help us through times of challenge. You can tap into that inner cheerleader and know that there is something within you this spirit of God that is within you that can handle whatever the situation is with peace and joy and know that you are divinely guided and supported in all things, even in this. We can embrace the change as a new opportunity for a greater expression of life. Change often brings new opportunities for growth and for greater goodness in our life. And we can also reach out for support. Many times, if we're going through a challenging situation that is difficult, we may need the support of others to help us through. 
reaching out to friends. And in this teaching, we talk about reaching out to practitioners as a place of added support. We can know that in the midst of change, that all is well, no matter what the appearance may be. My last thought on this is to just let go and let spirit navigate the way. After all, we can always state what we are desiring in our heart, but we need to let go of how the change is going to appear in our lives. That part is up to spirit. So pay attention when you are in a time of change and know that all is well and that you can come through it with peace and with joy. All right. Those are my thoughts about navigating change with peace and joy. As I said, we're going to be hearing more about that. But let's just take a moment. I want to lead us in an affirmative prayer, a spiritual mind treatment. So I'm going to do this in the first person. So if you would accept this for yourself um, and um, just accept this into your heart as the truth of, of who you are and who we all are. So just close your eyes and get comfortable. Take a couple of nice, slow, deep breaths. And just allow yourself to bring your focus on, on your heart, on your breathing, on your thoughts, and, and let everything else go. Whatever you've been Thinking about, worrying about, engaged in, just let all that go. And this is the present moment of power. This is the present moment of creativity. This is the present moment of, of peace and of joy. And as we do this, as we begin and bring our focus to this present moment, we know that this presence, this power, this universal goodness is all that there is. That God is everywhere present, expressing through all of life through every situation, through every person, through every molecule, through every atom, through every bit of nature, that God is all there is. And, and that I am immersed in this presence as well, that all I am is God and all of God is with me right now. So I just know that this is the truth of who I am. I align myself with this presence, with this power, with this goodness, with this love, with this prosperity, with this vibrant aliveness and health. As I do this, I know that all is well in my life. I let go of having to figure it out myself, having to, having to do it, having to force things, having to make something happen in my life. I let go of all that. Instead, I know that this spiritual presence, this power, this infinite wisdom shows up in my life and it does the work through me. So I simply surrender to this presence, to this power, to this goodness, knowing that the desires of my heart are, are good and that I stand in faith knowing that this presence and this goodness cares about me as an individual cares about my situation, cares and only desires the very best for me in my life. So I am just so grateful for being here this morning. I'm so grateful for this healing power and presence in my life and in the lives of all who are here listening, making all things new, transforming things into a greater and greater expression of life. So we just allow this presence to express fully and beautifully as us and through us. So I'm grateful for this. I surrender to it. I release this now. And so it is. Good morning, CSL Midtown. I'm Reverend Cynthia Paulson, and I am speaking to you today all the way from Oregon. Most of you know that last month, uh, my husband Gary and I made this huge life change and we sold our house in Rome, Georgia, which is outside of Atlanta, where it's been, what, about 100 degrees these days. And we moved all the way across the country to Brookings, Oregon, where I think it's in the mid 60s usually. So if you're not familiar with it, Brookings is this little, um, beautiful oceanside community on the southernmost uh, coast of Oregon. 
So it's very different than where we were before. So we experienced this move, this big change, more than just the weather. And lo and behold, the theme and topics for this month are all about navigating change. So I knew I would have a lot to contribute and talk about with this conversation. Now, I'm a spiritual person. I'm a minister and a practitioner. And I couldn't help but think about, from a spiritual perspective, what helped us, what really what helped me get through this big adjustment. Now, the title of my talk is Navigating Change with Joy. So you would suspect that I'm going to give a talk about joy, the wonderful spiritual principle that we can all use. And yes, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. But when I say navigating change with joy, I actually mean joy, our dog. We have a one-year-old Jack Russell puppy named Joy, and we made the six-day journey across the country with her by our side. And we have a photo right there. Thank you. Um, really, I think she was on top of us more uh, than by our side. <laughs> so, but if you saw the center's Facebook post about today's service, you know, the subtitle of my talk is how a Jack Russell taught me spiritual principle with regard to navigating this big change. Joy really did teach me a lot. Now, I think we all know that in general, we can learn a lot from dogs, right? Dogs are the best. Beyond the obvious things that they demonstrate, like loyalty and unconditional love, I learned so much spiritually from this dog's behavior on this trip across the country. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Joy is still a puppy. She's only one. And she is, let's see, how should I put this? Barely trained? Barely? <laughs> She is a Jack Russell after all, so it takes a long time to get a handle on a Jack Russell. So a lot of planning went into making this trip with her because we didn't know how she was going to respond. Dogs can freak out when they experience a big change in their life, just like people can. And the vet warned us about a thing called moving anxiety. Dogs don't like it when the house gets all packed up and there's boxes everywhere and then the movers come in and then in our case there was the actual travel involved with the move so it's all very strange for them and our vet gave us some magical uh, anti-anxiety pills to give her that would kind of sedate her but we didn't actually have to use them she did great because we had tricks up our sleeves to help things go smoothly so the first thing that joy taught me was how important it is to remember your physical needs when experiencing change. We were very mindful of this. Now, of course, Joy needed to be kept on her regular eating schedule, you know, just like if we were at home and not traveling. But we also had to give her extra treats, including um, we got her some of those really big bones that are hollowed out in the middle, and the dog can, you know, try to get the stuff out of the middle of that. And so she had those to work on on the drive. They kept her busy, but they also filled up her tummy. She was certainly never hungry. Now, you've probably heard that word before, hangry. And that means, you know, that's when we're hungry and it just seems like everything makes us angry. And we're really not actually angry, but we're just hungry to the point that everything irritates us. Being hungry is no way to navigate change. It's a physical need that needs to be met in order for us to get through whatever we're experiencing. Now, it's very difficult to stay spiritually aligned with our true divine self if we are hungry or thirsty or even tired for that matter. Eating, drinking, and sleeping are all physical needs that are easy for us to neglect when we're distracted by whatever challenge or change that's going on in our lives. So we had to make a point to be sure to offer Joy water, give her food and treats, and let her sleep as much as she wanted. We know that sometimes change and life transitions can be exhausting. That dog slept more in that car than we ever expected her to. She needed extra rest to get through this adventure. And if you think about it, it makes sense because so do we, right? For humans, sleep and periods of rest are when we rejuvenate. 
it's also, you know, when we dream and visualize, it's when we can reset ourselves mentally to a place where we're feeling better about the change we're experiencing. So it's really important sleep. It's easy to forget the care and feeding of our bodies in the midst of change. So don't knock a good nap, a nutritious meal, or an extra treat during times of change. And for heaven's sake, stay hydrated. Now, another thing that Joy taught me was that it's okay, and sometimes it's even a good idea, to be fluid and open to doing things differently when you're navigating change. We are often out of our comfort zone when we are experiencing change. I mean, we were really out of our comfort zone on that trip. Sometimes we're forced to do things differently, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. That's what I learned. Now here is this kind of weird example that happened on our trip. Now Joy is crate trained. So from the time we got her and she was 13 weeks old and just a little bitty baby, um, she has slept in her crate overnight and she does great with it. So what would typically happen every day, this was before our trip, before we moved, is my husband would get up first and let Joy out of her crate and she would then run into the bedroom at full force, jump up on the bed and attack me. And it was cute and adorable and it was playful, of course, but it was also super annoying, I have to admit. She would jump all over me and be really hyper and chewing on me. She loves to chew on my elbows. I don't know why. <laughs> and she would lick in my ears and get at my neck and everything. But here's what happened when we were on the trip. From her very first night in the hotel, we would put her to bed in her crate, like always, and she would cry and whimper and she didn't want to be in it. So my husband, the man who has insisted from day one that a dog will never sleep in our bed, <laughs> said, well, she's freaking out. We're not going to get any sleep. We've got to just let her sleep with us. So this happened every night on the trip until we finally just gave up using the crate and we let her sleep with us. <laughs> but the interesting thing is we noticed that Joy would wake up calmer in the morning. She never attacked us because she was already with us. She didn't get that hyper craziness that a puppy often gets. And even now that we're here and we're in our new home and we've been here, you know, over a month, we're pretty settled. She's back to sleeping in her crate. But in the mornings now, when we let her out of the crate, she will run and jump up on the bed, but she doesn't want to attack us. She just wants to snuggle under the covers and have some quiet time with us again. So it's a very interesting, subtle shift in her behavior. What started as a problem with her crying in her crate and feeling all this anxiety led to a new way of us doing things and better behavior from her. Now, to me, this was spiritual because what seems like a problem to us could be spirit presenting you with a different way of doing things. It's all in our attitude and our perception. So imagine if you looked at situations in your life like that, you know, what is spirit maybe trying to tell me? And I'm sure that my husband would get on here and say, spirit does not want that dog in our bed. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> now, another thing that Joy showed me on this trip was that when you are navigating a big change, it is really important to bring your people with you through your change. Now, Joy had us with her on this long, hot, boring car trip. We were shocked at how well behaved she was. I began to no notice that the reason she was well behaved was because she was always looking for us. We were in strange, unfamiliar places for six days in a row. We were at highway rest stops and eating at outdoor restaurants we had never been to. We were uh, you know, stopping at new parks and dog parks and unknown cities. And we were in and out of hotels and hotel rooms, on and on. The only thing that was constant and familiar for Joy was us. We're her people. We were the ones who kept her on track and were reassuring her that she was safe and everything was okay in all these weird places. 
Watching Joy's behavior of looking for us helped me realize that when we humans are going through transitions or you know, in the midst of change and turmoil, we need to make sure we are looking for and checking in with our familiar people. They are your guides to keep you on track, just like we kept Joy on track. Now, of course, I'm talking about this from a spiritual perspective. So I mean, checking in with your spiritual community, just you know, Judy was mentioning this too. Checking in with your prayer practitioners, your like-minded spiritual friends. These are the people who know the truth for you as you navigate whatever change you're going through. You don't have to bring them with you physically like Joy got to. You can bring their positive energy, their loving thoughts, their prayers, and their good intentions for you. Now, we really did this. I asked everybody to know the truth for us through this move. I was very vocal about it. I asked Dr. Bob and my mastermind group and my prayer partners and practitioner friends that I've known for years. I had everyone I knew praying and treating for our way to be made clear, for our health and our safety, and to just know the truth of our successful, perfect move. I brought my spiritual people with me through this change, and I know it helped. Now, Joy the dog really did choose and demonstrate Joy, the spiritual principle on this trip. So let's talk a little bit about Joy as a spiritual principle. I just read this great article on unity.org about Joy. It was written by Thomas Hopper, and it mentioned that often we think of Joy as being the result of a good thing happening. Something great happens in our life. And then we feel joy. But as he explains, it's actually the opposite. Joy is not a result of anything. It's a cause. It's a spiritual principle that we can use whether the conditions in our life are favorable and great or if they're traumatic and chaotic and difficult. It's in times like those, like times of great change, that we can do more than just put up with them. We can improve them by using the spiritual principle of joy. So what I saw Joy the dog do with the spiritual principle joy is she was constantly living in the moment. All dogs live in the present moment and we can learn a lot from that practice. You never see a dog lamenting about its past or worrying about its future. Dogs are always in the now, 100% in the present moment. So on this trip, that is where Joy the dog lived and moved and had her being in the present moment. For her, living in the moment means having endless, happy curiosity about life. Joy had people to meet everywhere we went. She had pats to get. It was all about getting pats from people. She had kisses to give. She had other dogs to greet and play with. She had grass to smell and new areas to explore everywhere and on and on. Joy was always joyfully ready to experience whatever was next. So what does this mean for humans? I really think this translates for us as a happy curiosity about our change, whatever life conditions we're experiencing. My husband Gary and I are so curious about this new city we live in. It is so different than what we were used to and where we came from. It's considered a rural community, which includes a way of life that we've never experienced before. And it's kind of cool. We have so much to learn and we are happily curious about it all. When we make the decision to choose joy, it takes conscious effort. So what does that mean? What can we do to make the effort toward joy? I think it can be as simple as choosing things that lift your vibration, choosing things that keep your spirits high. This means that when you're navigating change, bring your spiritual tools with you, your spiritual practice, because that we know is what keeps our spirits high. I mentioned before how important our physical nourishment is, but our spiritual nourishment matters too. 
So during a big change, it is not the time to give up your meditation practice or stop your spiritual reading practice or whatever it is you do to connect with spirit. And your natural inclination will be to let those things fall to the wayside because we get really distracted during big changes. Our normal daily schedules were in complete upheaval on that trip. <laughs> and I had to make a point, no matter how tired I was, to do our nightly readings, to no matter how distracted I was, to take time to meditate and pray. I had to make that a priority during this change. So I want to wrap up here by mentioning a famous Greek philosopher named Heraclitus. I had to Google how to say it and do the listening. I hope I'm saying that right. Heraclitus, I think is how you say it. <laughs> he was known for his thoughts about the unity of life, despite the change that we experience, the fact that life is in flux for humans a lot of the time. He has a famous quote that um, you've probably heard before about how you've never stepped in the same river twice because you know the water is always flowing and changing. But the other quote that's attributed to him that I wanted to bring up, Judy already mentioned, and I love it. The only thing that is constant is change. Now, I want to talk about that quote because I adamantly disagree with it. I believe, and I believe our philosophy and the science of mind teaches that the only thing that is constant is God, spirit, universe, source, whatever we call it, the one power, one mind, one presence, that is the only thing that is constant. And it's the only thing that is changeless. So it behooves us to remember that in the midst of change. When we commit to bringing our spiritual tools, you know, bringing the truth of our divine joy with us, Maybe the most important spiritual tool to bring is our awareness of God's constant, changeless presence. That is our joy. That is our truth. There is no change we can go through, no place we can move to to get away from it or be separated from it. So I'll leave you with that today, and I hope you all have a joy-filled day. Thank you, Reverend Cynthia. That was an awesome talk. Joy, the principle, joy the dog and, and change. And that's what we bring here to you every week is these spiritual ideas to enhance your life. And with that, we have an opportunity to share our good with the center to keep this center going. Um, and so you can donate to us at cslmidtown.org slash donate or on the QR code you'll see in a minute is we do our affirmation for prosperity or of I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join in the divine flow and all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. So, yeah. Scan the QR code. You can set up a one-time, you can do a one-time donation or you can do your ongoing donations all there right on the website. And um, so I've got some announcements. Next week, we are back in person at the Garden Hills Community Center. So if you're in Atlanta, want to join us in person, that's going to be an opportunity. We do a potluck. So Make your favorite dish and bring it on, and we'll have a, a little feast after after the service. And um, so that's the first Sunday of the month. We do that every month, and Dr. Bob will be back for that. Um, that's what we got going on. And after this, if you want to join us on Zoom for a discussion group about what uh, Reverend Cynthia talked about, she'll be there. We can talk that up. And if we now we'll go to our affirmation of life. Thanks. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me.
And so it is. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.